do not shave the rim to deal with the space. Drink tea. God, this music's terrible. Let's see if we can fix that. Hello. This time on Crash Test Dummy TV. <laughs> Hello all, just had to wait for the chorus to start. Um, I have had a request from this guy. He has a Virago. He's interested in doing a, uh, a VMAX conversion. Now, it has been a few years since I've done this, but it, it pretty much was straightforward. Um, yeah, the last owner... I think he was heading towards this sort of uh, change but his father was saying that the front end when he got to that bit apparently he did his sums wrong he couldn't do it he gave up bike sat in the garage for six years in a box basically everything in boxes that's why it's a bargain anyway um, the front end I think I've spoken about in, the, in another video if I haven't shoot me a comment I will do a special video just for that um, rear end now a lot of these uh, Japanese manufacturers they try efficiency um, cost you know effectiveness that sort of thing they will cross-reference parts in uh, some of their bikes you'd be surprised how many bikes out there road going have actually motors that were from a trail bike or um, a trail bike that has a motor from a road bike Yamaha TDM850 and the T TRX850, exactly the same motor. Um, I wouldn't mind actually getting a TDM850 because I know the TRX sound horn on the road. There's a sample for you. <laughs> um, yeah, so the that's one bike I'd like to get my hands on. But anyway, off the topic. Back to this. Um, the discs cross-referenceable quite a few Yamahas um, the rear end it basically went together by itself almost uh, the only thing I really had to play with was the uh, the spaces left and right spaces um, I believe on the inside of the rim don't quote me on that crunch um, yeah because this one this uh, uh, brake caliper steady assembly um, that is from don't quote me on this it might be fj xj it could be xj actually um put a little light on the subject cool trendy yellow light Woo! freebie anyway um ooh, it's dirty in there anyway that brake caliper assembly i believe like i say xj 1300 possibly um possibly less uh, I, I, I pretty much just walked around the wreckers. In hindsight, I kind of regret not getting, I think it was an FJ. They have a hung brake caliper from down the bottom. Um, if you're thinking about this conversion, have a think about that one. Because the downside of having your caliper and the steady arm and everything up the top, it kind of looks ugly. On the other side, you can see the disc, uh, the, well, the, the, the rim, it's, it's all exposed. But this side, it's it's got the busy end so it kind of looks a little messy um, that's what I've always thought anyway um, I've just trimmed it up with a little bit of alloy aluminium tape that sort of thing painted it black of course you know the beautiful sticker on the front here the perfect you know um, representation of uh, uh, channel color and art and everything else <laughs> anyway I'll stop stop stroking my uh, myself um, now one thing is uh, different about this swing arm for some reason the previous owner braced the crap out of it um, maybe he was going to go for a trailer quite possibly uh, but this this extra bracing here it's got five weld points and uh, it is certainly not standard um, but as a downside of that i can't run the standard muffler uh, the box section underneath the swing arm it just would not fit um, i 
was going to cut the crap out of the uh, the muffler, um, weld in a couple of plates, you know, shrink it down basically. But um, I ended up selling it to uh, one of the Ulysses Club members, the muffler itself. Um, so yeah, I pretty much made back. Well, I bought the bike for $500 originally, and I sold the muffler for I think 250. So <laughs> made half the bike back just on the muffler. Anyway, now. Um, first things first, going to pull this all apart, have a look at it, um, point out some things that I did, etc, etc, um, to uh, this guy, <laughs> um, to answer his questions and anybody else that stumbles across this video. Anyway, stop talking. Uh, first things first, we've got to jack up the bike. Now I was going to film it, but you know, I think it's a bit dark under there. Now the position I'm jacking it from, there's a center stand that I've taken, uh, yeah, center stand that I've taken out, but I'm using the mount itself to uh, to jack the bike up, and I'm leaving the side stand on the other side, only because on the rear it works easier on the rear than it does the front. It doesn't take much to get the wheel off the ground. And there you go, it's off. Uh, now. The Harley Road King that I had in the garage here, um, I wouldn't jack that up this way. That bike itself weighs, I think, 360 or 70 kilos, so that much pressure on the side stand, not a good idea. The average road bike, um, small cruiser, that sort of thing, trail bike definitely, you should be able to uh, jack it up in this method to get your rear wheel off. Now, it's up in the air. Drink of tea. All right, lights, camera, action, thank you. Okay, now, as you can see, oh, I might actually get comfortable. It's just a normal bike, normal Virago, normal rim, uh, normal diff, I should say. Um, the rim on a Virago should be a spoke and it should be a drum. Now, this has been obviously converted to disc and it's got a VMAX rim on it, which I tried my best to uh, polish the crap out of side cutters called side cutters because they cut on the side I should have myself a little tin to put things in but I don't now the thing is with this rear rim it's never really been able to tighten up fully axle I think standard Virago. <laughs> There's a lot of think here. The unfortunate thing about this, I made this up a, a lot as I went. Um, yeah, I just sort of, you know, went to the wreckers, got some parts and put it together how I sort of had it evolve. Now I found sometimes in some cases the easiest way to take your rear off take it off with the diff that way you're keeping all the, uh, the everything together anyway Bandit Nev made a comment recently that he doesn't mind uh, watching the bolts come off the nuts come off so this bit is for you Nev I'll just waffle on and make things up as I go, talking wise. Try not to hit the paint so I scratch it and take nuts off at the same time. Waffle, waffle, waffle. And I didn't clean this spanner properly. I'm getting gick on my uh, nice, pretty clean, bloody nuts. But that's okay, because as a rule, the way I was brought up, I. Uh, my first job, I was 12 years old and I worked in my brother's mechanics workshop. Well, it wasn't his. He was an apprentice there. But it was just him, Carl, the owner, and uh, myself. And of course I was the lackey. But Carl taught me there's a lot of respect for... You've got to have a lot of respect for tools and the work you do. Now, one thing that's a good habit to get into 
anything that goes back together, make sure it's clean. It'll look better. If it's a nut or a bolt, it'll actually operate better. Because if they have grease on the thread, they may not lock so well. Etc, uh, etc. Et and it's pride in your work. So, it doesn't matter my nuts and bolts are dirty, because they will be clean eventually. Anyway, there you go, Nev. That one's for you. Bolt's taken off. Gotta go to the shocker now. Oh, this is 17. Poop it. 17. I've got a damaged hand, so I shouldn't be bashing away at bloody spanners. Little uh, life hack, by the way. You're supposed to use a bigger spanner on the, uh, the smaller one because it fits better. Like, you know. Anyway. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that way. Yeah, it fits better. But yes, in this case, did it that way. That's another one for you, Nev. Another nut coming off. <laughs> anyway. I might uh, loosen up all what I need to and then I'll take it off with my fingers bit by bit. So I'm going to pause for a little bit. Alright, continuing on. I've loosened off everything. Um, it's basically ready for me to show you how to disassemble it. Now, this is normal Virago. This is quite standard um, as far as how this is bolt on. The diff itself is Virago. Um, it might be Vmax, no, it's Virago. The chrome ones were more likely Virago. Uh, the uh, painted black or the factory grey was uh, more so the, uh, the Vmax ones. Um, so yes, now, uh, two bits of wood. Leverage, this is where a fulcrum comes in. Because with a fulcrum, you can move the world, apparently. Just bounce it with your foot or your hand just bounce it up so up and down and pull at that shocker at the same time and you'll feel that little bit of freeness oh come on anyway you could use a lever behind it whereas I'm using my hand there we go. Come on, bounce, bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce, bounce your ball, bounce. It's so much fun. Now, I could have loosened off the top, but I didn't. All right, now that's away enough. All right, this is all loose, ready to go. Now, little trick. Turn the nut around and thread it back on backwards. This is more so for these uh, split bin type nuts. Now the reason I've done it backwards is, okay I'm using a rubber mallet, but if I was using a metal hammer it would not be uh, bending the crap out of the, uh, the top fins. Where's my... oh shit. Ah, there we go. But when you're at a point to take it off you then get the T-bar you use to take it off with. Hopefully that bearing uh, ball won't be a problem. Shut up radio. The diameter of most of these T-bars is quite skinny. So as I'm knocking the uh, axle out, it's being replaced. Where's the donk? There's the donk. It's been replaced by this, which is a lot thinner, and as you can see, it can fall out by itself. Oh, by the way, quick side note. Grab a, uh, a pan drip tray, just in case your diff might uh, drip some oil. Come on, last nut. All right, there you go, Nev. Last nut's off. Okay, axle. Try and keep off the ground, keep the dust away from it. Now this is another spot that these uh, 
blocks of wood come in handy. Alright, that's out. Now, that's where you need like a third hand, second person, whichever. Or in this case, I use my bottom under the piece of wood. Putting your shoulder somewhere near the, uh, the rear guard. That's it. Just, uh, you may have to pull hard, you may have to pull soft. Second person may even be just holding the front brake, you know, make sure the uh, bike doesn't fall to bits. Anyway, clear your space. Start letting it all down and watch this. Come on, come off. Up, 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 up. A little bit more. Oh god, that little bloody bleeding nipple on the other side's being a pain. I did jack it up higher before, but it needs to go higher again. There we go. Oh, where are you facing, Diff? Come on, stand up, stand up, stand up. Don't leak everywhere. All right, that's one wheel off. Okay, now, that's the spline, the standard v uh, Virago spline. I could pull that out if I want, but I don't have to, so I'm not going to. How's underneath looking? I use the standard rear guard. I've used the standard front plastic guard, but I have painted it on the other side. Same as the... Uh, the guard itself on the outside with the silver strip all the way over just to you know match it all in the side fins are left black though um it was a rag now brake calipers i need better light on this this yellow one's a bit iffy and i'll have to use a torch hopefully it's lit up enough um now my pads Still very healthy. One thing I had to do with my pads, if I can get this off. Right. One thing I had to do with my pads is. Where's the torch? These blocks just here. Now, what was what is happening? As you can see, it's very close to the pad itself. I'm going to have to grind that down a little bit more. Um, I don't know what it does, it's just a body as such, so um, yeah, I need to cut that down more. Uh, so that's one thing you'll have to look out for, it's on both ends. So the body of this one, yeah. Now, any part numbers on here? Uncover for pad service. Sumitomo brake pad, uh, brake caliper. 86. KR. Yeah, 86 KR. No other markings by the looks. So anyway, that's what that's off. And the uh, the brake steady would have been pro most likely the same thing, just to keep it uh, the same. Now, I have not... Have I or haven't I? No, there's no signs. I have not adjusted this at all. That pretty much uh, was a good size. The bit that I did have to adjust is inside the rim itself. So I'll get to that next, but I'll take that outside so it's in the light. Um, cool. So a little bit of a pause after a little bit more waffling. Um, you can see this bracing, I hope. I hope if everything's out of the way, clonk, clonk, clonk. It's just been attached to the standard swing arm itself and then welded on very neatly at five points. One, two, three, no, four points, five points. Eh. One, two, three, four, five points. Hopefully you can see that. Cool. Get out of the way, caliper. So yeah, standard swing arm, bracing, unknown reason. 
but I don't mind. It means it's stronger. Cool. Anyway, let's pull this room apart and show you what's inside. It's one thing you gotta watch with space is it can't press up too much and it can't press up too little. And you gotta make sure where it presses, um, you want the face, the inner face of uh, bearings so everything can roll. Um, that's where you want to press up. So you've got to watch your spaces width as far as are they going to press against the outer ring of the bearing or the inner ring which is against the axle. Mm. While it's all off, up close and personal with this uh, Brake caliper steady arm. Now, every brake caliper needs to have an extra arm, extra arm or, a or another point of contact to stop things from moving when you brake. You don't want your caliper to spin around with the disc. Uh, now, I haven't had this officially engineer certificated, but this um, this arm itself, I had a, uh, a guy I knew at the time. He uh, was working as an engineer out of his house. Um, yes, so that is a stainless steel arm with pivot arms and uh, little grub screws in the uh, pivot arms to uh, lock on or not. Um, but you want it to freely move around re relatively. Um, I think I sourced all the parts. I took it up to him and then got him to uh, put it all together pretty much. So, hmm, you want to have a look at that maybe get a professional to do that bit and that's a little bit dirty oh cool but yeah that fully fully pivots so if it needs to with the suspension cool so that's that bit now let's pull this rim to bits all right now diff should it has modified this and I do not say I did it correctly so it may take some effort to get off no it didn't good now what did I adjust size wise I'm pretty sure that was modified and perhaps that all right so there are your spaces that sit against bearings inside your diff the long shaft obviously uh, touches right right through whoops watch the oil goes right through this shaft and uh, presses up against the bearing on the outer housing this bit here so that's how it works now your spline should match up uh, worst case you may be able to take off these plates and uh, swap them over uh, because there may be a bit of height difference um, there was definitely spacing in between that you'll have to look at now I don't see any metal filings or anything like that so I think this has got a, a good bill of health hmm smear grease on the bits that should have grease smeared on while you're here cool now the tricky bit getting the bloody thing on without this thing falling off or should I leave it off no we can look at the other side with the diff on dirty diff dirty rim find your spline should drop in and if it doesn't you'll find out when you go put it back on <laughs> now on this side yeah that was that spacer pressing up against that bearing cool so that is pretty much how all this went together uh, like I say it, it pretty much bolted together there was a little bit of spacing issues I had to deal with uh, there is a rim I've got hanging up I will make the effort and pull it down and show you what the previous owner did to allow for this space it was quite silly, reckless and um, I didn't notice until it 
snap the rim. But anyway, I'll get to that in a minute, show you pictures. Cool. Uh, apart from that, it's, it's fairly standard. The VMAX rim. Discs are cross-referenceable with XJ1300, FJ, I think 1200s or 1300s, um, and a couple of others. They're a twin vented disc and uh, really good stopping power. Anyway, I'm going to wash this, give it a long awaited clean. Sometimes hard to get to your back rim, but in this opportunity, when it's off, these are the best times to clean it, get your toothbrush inside and so on. Groovy. Anyway, I'll show you that uh, rim in a minute, that broken one. I wish I filmed that. <laughs> Just getting this down, I had to make a crate there, a little hole there so I could stand up in that little spot there so I could move the motor, get to the rim, pull the rim out whilst the motor was on an angle, put the rim down here, put the motor back, all the crap back in the corner, which I made a little bit more space by the way, um, and then get out of my crawl space while leaving the rim here, down here, and now I've got the rim. <sighs> anyway, alright now. What the last owner did, yeah, on this side, this is where all the, uh, that plate I showed you on, underneath the diff, you got this plate here, the backing plate, that sort of thing, that's where all this is bolted up to, it's basically a drive plate, it's what holds your uh, spline on. Now, what they did, there's a little lip on the standard bit, it's, it's not much, it's, it's higher though, um, and they ground this down flat. Now. As a cause of that, you've got, with casting, you've always got a, on the inside, you've always got the, the line that follows. Now, the line on the outside had a little a little lip, like any corner of this wood. It's just got a little lip, it's changing angles, it's going up. Now, in grinding down the face, the angle that was on the outside was followed on the inside. So well basically what I'm getting to it had a millimeter or two thickness of alloy holding on that center plate um, now I was out Arthur's seat with my girlfriend on the back of the bike when it snapped um, fortunately everything because everything's pressed up against it it, it just felt like the back was wrong you know etc in the end I actually did ride at home but very carefully and slowly um, then bought another rim and then dealt with the spacing so do not shave the rim to deal with the space because as a result you'll end up cracking it because it'll be too thin that's a big warning out there big warning cool all right well I'm going to put it back together after I clean it now I'll involve you in that process just in case there's any hiccups or tricks but uh, apart from that, that's the spacing issues that you'll have to deal with on a Virago to put a Virago, uh, sorry, a VMAX rim on the rear of a Virago. Now the front end, that's a whole different story. And I'm sure, I think I have another video, I've got that mentioned in another video, but I will make another video in the future on how I put VMAX 40mm diameter forks, triple clamps of VMAX on a standard pin on the standard uh, bearings and frame of the Virago. So it's just bolt on. Groovy. That's another one. Anyway, I'm going to clean up my mess. Clean up my... Why did you just stop? As I was saying, I'm going to clean up my mess, clean up my parts, get it all ready for assembly, then I'll continue recording. Cool. So, ready, set, next. Next, we've got to put it back on. Um, 
I must point this out to the Harley owner actually. He's pricing up other people to polish his rims I offered. But anyway, some of these Harley owners think that their bikes are amazing and can't be worked on apart from an expert. Anyway, stop whinging. <laughs>